Hello friends of Venus 4, my name is Lauren and today I have for you a reading for the winter solstice. So the winter solstice is when we finally transition into winter. That is also when we get initiated into Capricorn season. So a potent time of year. Um, if you have never been here before. Hi, hello, my name is Lauren. I live in PA and I read tarot. I talk about astrology, witchy tips, um, toxic spirituality, and the like. Today, as you know, is starting to be a, a crappy, crappy time of year because of the weather. So here in PA, I'm actually not going to work. I am doing the thing at home. Schools are closed, except for the one that live that is right next door to me, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, so how are you doing? Let me know in the comments down below what's going on with you. How's the weather where you're at? I'm done vending, but if you want to connect with me more and buy some of my art, because I'm also an artist, uh, links in my link tree down below. I got this little thing for me while vending. This is a kyanite ring um, that I've been just loving, loving so much because I've never seen a faceted kyanite like that. It's very dark and rich and delicious. It's perfect for doing the thing. Um, but yeah, let's begin by just thinking about what Capricorn season represents. Um, and I will make another video about Capricorn. Um, Capricorn, of course, is the devil in the tarot. So we'll look at the devil in the tarot um, for some extra context. But Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So if that's any indicator, this is a sign that's about structure and creating space. Like the space is not there, you make it in a very tangible sort of way because it's an earth element. So this time of year, it's interesting to think about work and doing that because we're thinking about family and, and connecting for the most part, that seems to be the vibe. Um, but what is the tangible work we're tapping into this season? What's the tangible work we're tapping into? Tangible work we're tapping into this season. Collectively. All right. Six of Pentacles. This is a great card for being reminded of the give and take. The tangible work you might see right off the bat is giving, sharing, um, taking care of community, but also knowing that it's okay to ask for help in our tangible projects. So in this card, the invitation can be a little bit of both. You can be the guy, the person passing out the goods, or you could be the person who is receiving. And both those things are actually really important, very potent. And we're constantly changing whether we have the capacity to give or we need to receive. So this season, what are we tangibly building? The give and take between these three characters. Sometimes we are asking, sometimes we are receiving, and sometimes we are giving. But ultimately, what this means is that it's all in flux. If you're going back to see family or creating space with uh, found family, here's what I want you to think about, and this is super important. Think about where you can give and receive, where you can ask, and where you can step in to support those who might need it. This might be just managing your time and going, okay, I can't spend this much time at my parents' house because I'm going to feel drained and I want to be able to give them some of my time, but I also need to receive support from being alone and having space to recoup and feel better, right? So you could be giving help to friends who need it in this hard time of the year, 
Or you might be asking for, you know what, I need help. I'm, I'm falling on hard in times right now. But the invitation with this card and with the question is, we are building the structures that say when I need this and when I can give that. I think sometimes writing it down becomes overrated, but definitely write things down. Write your needs down. Write what you have to offer down. Because this can just make it easier for us to articulate, okay, I can do that, but I can't do this. And that way, we can kind of build a roadmap of to, in a way to, sorry, to support ourselves emotionally. Ultimately, that's really important. So, let's pull two different cards. One for how can we receive more and how can we give more. Let's start with how can we give more. Actually, no. How can we receive more? That's what's coming up first. How can we receive more? How can we receive more? This wands, this seven of wands comes to us as like a guarding sort of thing. But if this is for receiving, what does that mean? When we look at wands, it's usually a creative invitation. But even more than that, it's about our spirit and the fire that we control, that we empower. So, letting my cat in. So if we're thinking about our creative energy, we're thinking about how to open up. It's about knowing when that energy is necessary to expel and where a boundary needs to be kept. So we are best at receiving when we have healthy boundaries. <sighs> Come here. When we have healthy boundaries, we are able to understand how much we can give without getting so overwhelmed. Come. So one thing to be reminded of of this card is, this is my cat, Shiva, hi, um, is to think about where your boundaries are and why they're important. We're able to give if we're not empty, right? So knowing where to create boundaries with our loved ones and families so we're not overextending ourselves is actually the best way to receive. This doesn't mean just saying like, I cut you out, I can't like do this anymore. It means vocalizing in a right way, in a proper way that expresses your point without trying to inflict harm. So that might be, hey, I'm going to come over for Christmas since you've invited me, but I have to leave at this time because I have something else I have to do after. And maybe you don't have anything to do but just replenish your energy, but you don't have to tell that. You can just say, I have other things I need to attend to. And if someone tries to push you, be like it's personal. Because why would anyone be asking you that? So yes, boundaries are super important for being able to give to our fullest because when we have boundaries that are understood and they're acknowledged and they're, they're expressed in loving ways, then we are able to be fully present in a way that is not totally like zapped. So last card. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you for your love. How can we receive more? How can we be? That was giving. How about receiving? Card for receiving. Woo! Card for receiving. (sighs) 
the world. Our final stop in the major arcana. This completion and also opening. The world is so expansive, right? The world is so big and so vast. So this card comes to us as, if you want to receive, you have to be open. And that might seem like a no fucking duh, Lauren. Um, but sometimes we need to be reminded that if we're not getting what we need, we one might have a trauma around receiving. Because for some of us, it's hard. It's hard to ask for help. It's hard to accept that others want to help us. But... If you're also just kind of like focused on the have-nots in a way where you're like, I don't have this, I don't have that. I say this a bunch about the four pinnacles, but like you might be missing what's right under your feet. You might be missing the friends and family that are like, bitch, I love you. I will do anything. <laughs> so this is like a completion, an opening of being able to say I'm completely vulnerable. And like, I can ask for help, even if it's embarrassing. Like, it's never embarrassing to ask for help. If someone makes you feel bad, they're not the best people for you. Because if you're asking for help, that's a legitimate need. Yeah? Go to those who have completed the journey with you, who have gone the similar distance and have shown that they value you. Make sure you're spending your energy of ask on those who have journeyed with you some or at least have shown that they are invested in your well-being because that can be part of the trauma right we ask people who just don't have the capacity to support us and that's not always a reflection of them it's just they're not there to help you because they have their own shit going on and that's not he, that's not a good or a bad thing it's neutral it's their experience so don't let it affect yours Jupiter is also related to this card. This is a very um, Jupiter-esque card to me. And it's just like this big, expansive world of open up. Like the, the boobies are out. The arms are out wide. The circle is surrounding. This is, this is powerful shit. So pay attention. Be open with what you need so that you can receive. Sometimes that means letting your guard down. Sometimes that means exposing truths that you're embarrassed by. But why are you embarrassed? If you have the social capacity of an aunt, honor that. You can't be social for everybody. You can't be there for everybody but you can be there for you because you are all you're responsible for. You can give, but you have to be selective with your giving so that you can come to your fullest. And know that it's always changing. This is always in flux. So thank you for the special episode with my friend. And thank you for listening. Again, if you want to connect, my link tree is down below. If you want to support me, I have a um, Patreon where I do art as ritual. We actually have a ritual this week about restorative art practices. But anyway, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.